What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna be going through the most common tank water heaters. Water heaters with tanks on them. I'm gonna be going through a suburban water heater and I'm gonna be going through an Atwood water heater. So stay tuned, let's get into it. So this is what you see when you open up your water heater compartment. Here we have the control board. We have the wires coming into the control board. Then here we have our thermostat, which shut the water heater off at about 140 degrees. Here we have our ECO, or emergency cutoff, which will shut the water off at about 180 degrees. And then if these two fail and water is still heating in your tank, you have a TMP valve here, which I believe blows at 210 degrees or 150 PSI. So if your tank is just superheating and these have failed, this is going to be leaking or it's going to be open and you'll have water spewing out of that. That's a safety mechanism. Um, for an Atwood water heater, you should have a plastic plug here. It's another safety feature. In case this fails, this will blow out as well because that's why it's plastic. This is your gas valve and everything on this side is 12 volts. Okay, so if you're testing this with a multimeter, you're white and orange on this model and I'm reading off of this uh, wiring diagram. I'll I'll show a picture of the wiring diagram here so you can see it more clearly. But the white and the orange wires coming to this water heater are for the switches, are for the gas and the electric switches. The green and the blue are your power. Now, if you have 12 volts getting to your water heater, and then you have 12 volts here at the wires going to your control board, but you have no 12 volts leaving the control board, then you're going to need to replace your control board. If you have power coming to the control board, nothing happens after it, obviously the issue is in your control board. I'm going to have a link in the description on how to use a, a multimeter if you need that while you're checking for 12 volts. Now, let's say your power comes into this water heater, comes into the control board, and it comes down through this wire and stops here at this thermal couple. Now, this thermal couple needs continuity. How to test for continuity is in that link about your multimeter down below. So if you need to watch that and learn how to wor uh, work a multimeter, go ahead and give that a watch. But your thermocouple needs to have continuity. If the beep is not existing through here, if it's not doesn't have good connection, then your water heater will not work. Next, if you have power through the thermocouple to the thermostat, but not after the thermostat, then we know we need a new thermostat. So we're really following the trail of 12 volts here. So if I have power coming all the way back to this control board from my, my thermostat, we know that the thermostat, the control board, and the power to the water heater are all good. Now we also have this ECO here. Power is supposed to come to the ECO, and then once it is allowed to open that gas valve, power coming through the ECO to the gas valve, the gas valve will open and then we'll have propane. So let's say we have good power coming all the way through our gas valve, but the propane is not, you know, the flame is not lighting. If the gas valve is not opening, you might have some bad uh, solenoids here which you can replace, but the gas valve is really, what, $100, $150? I, I haven't looked at prices in a little while, but you might need to replace your gas valve. If you get good power to the gas valve, but you're not getting gas to the water heater, then it could be a gas valve. Now, I always check the propane to the water heater first. Just crack this open, you'll start hearing a hiss, you'll hear the, the hiss, or you'll smell propane, then you know the gas valve is, is bad because we have good propane to the gas valve, but no propane coming through it. Another thing we need to check with these water heaters is this right here. This just loosens up and then this will slide. Propane is not flammable. Propane is only flammable when it's mixed with oxygen. So what we need to do is get this set to the right place where the water heater is not roaring. We want it to be just audible so that you hear a little bit of a flame, you hear a little bit of noise, but it's not so obnoxious it's gonna disrupt your day. We just want a little bit of airflow to help that ignite. Now, the igniter you should hear going tick, 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 tick. If you see in here, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little igniter. It needs to be about an eighth of an inch from the other probe. So if it's ticking and you see a little, like, little electro, little lightning bolt between the two posts, then it's trying to ignite and that's good. Now, this control board needs to sense the flame. The way it senses flame is through that igniter, it'll read the carbon in the flame, basically giving continuity from the ground to this, and if the flame keeps going out, then there's something wrong with your control board. So we want this flame to stay on and be good for, you know, as long as it needs to heat the water. Another big problem with these water heaters is people sometimes don't clean these out. You need to be able to get full airflow. 
this is the, the where the flame is going to be, and this is the exhaust. So we want this flame to be able to have a clean line all the way to that exhaust. So we want to make sure that these tubes are completely cleaned out. Sometimes wasps and things like to build nests in there, so we've got to, we've got to really watch that. Here is the back of that Atwood water heater, or Dometic water heater. So here we have, this is where the 120 volts from your AC power will come in. Now if you have good AC power here, and again, if you need that, that multimeter video, it's in the description. If you have 120 here on the ground and this hot leg or the neutral in this hot leg, but the power stops at this relay, you have to make sure you have 12 volts on this yellow line when the water heater is trying to call for hot water. If you do not have 12 volts on this line and the water heater switches on for the electric, then it's the control board is bad. Now if you have power coming from the control board, 12 volts on this yellow line coming to this relay, but still 120 is not going from, from this post to this post, then your heating element isn't even getting the power, so you have a bad relay, right? So to recap, if you have no 12 volts at the yellow line, then you need to replace your control board. If you do have 12 volts at this yellow line, but no voltage, 120, going to this heating element, you need 120 on all these black wires, then you have a bad relay, which you need to replace the relay. Another test that we can do on this water heater is say, we're getting perfectly good power to the heating element. We have 120 at these two posts, right here in the back. On the, the positive and this neutral, we have 120 but still the water heater's not working, we need to check this heating element. And the way we do that is for continuity. We put our two, meter, our two probes on the back of this and we need 10 ohms. We're doing a continuity test, we're looking for 10 ohms. It could be nine, it could be 12, it could be close. We just need around 10 ohms for this water heater element to be good. We have cold water in, hot water out, cold water in, hot water out and I believe that is it the Atwood water heater does not need an anode rod and before I finish up this video I want to remind you never put a metal valve in here again it's a safety it's supposed to have a plastic uh, cap in here so that if this thing starts to superheat and everything's failed that cap will explode and come out of the tank instead of the tank blowing up inside your RV and causing a huge mess one important thing I want you to notice about both these water heaters is the Suburban has the vent on the top right, the Atwood has the vent on the top left. If you have the vent on the top right, you have a Suburban. Top left, you have an Atwood. If you have a Suburban water heater, you need to change the anode rod at least once a year, depending on how bad your water is. So that is something you need to check, your anode rod. So your Suburban water heater is pretty much the same as the Atwood, but notice there is no control board here, and your heating element is under this cover here. That cover right there has your heating element under it. You also have an on-off switch for your heating element. So, it's the same series of 12 volts, only we don't see the wires coming in like we did the other water heater because it's all done behind this, com this, it's all done behind this compartment. So here's your thermostat, again 140 degrees, that shuts your water heater off. And here's your ECO, same thing, shuts your water heater off at 180 degrees. This blows at 210 or 150 PSI. And this one does not have the plastic plug. This has the anode rod, which you see the hole right there at the bottom. I don't have an anode rod in this unit, obviously it was taken out of somebody else's RV, and it's been garbage. We do a lot of the same testing as before. If I have power to this heating at this, uh, if I have power to this thermostat, but no power after it, we have a bad thermostat. Same thing with the ECO. If I have power to the ECO, 12 volts we're looking for in both these. If I have 12 volts at the ECO, but nothing after it, we have a bad ECO. We need to change that. Same thing with our gas valve. While the water heater's checking for gas, we want 12 volts at these posts in the back. And then we do the same test with this, uh, with this gas valve as we did with the other one. If we hear this thing chunk and it opens and we smell gas but it's not igniting, we need to look at the igniter the same way we did with the Atwood. Now the control boards for these units are behind the wall. They're usually stuck on top or they're on the side somewhere. This one has a wiring diagram right here on the side, which is a little harder to get to when you're working inside the RV. And then that'll dictate where this control board is plugged in. Right here usually is your control board. And then it looks like this is my power. The red is usually the positive. The heating element will have its power in the side over here. So you should see a, uh, a Romex cable coming in the side. And then this will have your 120 connectors. 
So if we have good 120 here, then you know we know that the power is coming to the water heater. If we don't have 120 here, we need to check where our source for the power is coming from. And then it's the same thing with the heating element on this one. We want to make sure that we have 10 ohms on the heating element or we have good power to it when the, front of the water heater is calling for heat. And that pretty much is your suburban water heater and your Atwood water heater. Um, your Atwood water heater has the, di the, the model number and the make and all that right here. You want to get the diagram for your proper model number. Same thing with the suburban. It has this document right here on the right side. We want to make sure that we're looking at the proper wiring diagrams when we're working on these things. This is Justin Green with Go Green Mobile RV Repair. I'm a certified RV repair tech. If this video helped you, please hit like and subscribe. I do a lot of videos about repairs. Again, if you need help with your multimeter, the video is in the description. Thank you guys for watching.